When people tell you wrestling isn't real, what they're actually saying is they don't understand what kayfabe is. And this is why people are so easily manipulated. Now, I'm a typical 90s kid. Kayfabe is something I learned about when I was watching wrestling. Kayfabe is the betrayal of staged events as if they were true. It's the reason I tuned in week after week to watch Brutus the Barber Beefcake shave the head of Ron Bass after beating the crap out of each other for the last half an hour. It's funny because every man I know who's good at game, good at dealing with office politics, even the one that's good at like politic politics, they all grew up watching wrestling. It's that point where some childhood joy in vaudeville theater transformed socially awkward kids into socially savvy men in the information age and the attention economy. Kayfabe. It has a certain self-awareness along with the suspension of disbelief. I'll give you a few examples of what I'm talking about. I'm going to play you a simple guitar riff, and if you recognize it, you'll know what it is, and you're going to notice a few things. It's called a leitmotif. It's a short, reoccurring musical phrase associated with a person, a place, or idea. Now, if you're not a wrestling fan, I'll use an example you'll definitely recognize. The Imperial Stormtrooper March every time Darth Vader enters, or the Princess Leia tune every time she enters a room. Same thing. You hear this, and you begin to instantly associate it with, in this case, the Ultimate Warrior, the pinnacle of the 80s and 90s. It's bright, it's colorful, it's extreme and radical, and it's a complete upturning of everything around it. It's a Sega commercial in spandex shorts. It's a staged event portrayed as if it were true. Kayfabe. It's more than that though. So take the example here. I mean, this is almost a perfect three-act play. Hogan feels his opponent out. He starts to get scared because it's a threat he's never seen before just like every single WrestleMania he's ever been the main event of. And near the end of the second act, when all hope is lost, he gets that Americana Hulkamania adrenaline boost. It's that red-blooded America Hulkamania coursing through his veins and then something just snaps. Now, anybody who's watched this growing up has had the urge to beat up his brother increased by about 10,000% in that moment. A hit to the face. Nothing. Another one. Nothing. A third try. And he hits back. And there, right there, that's the moment where Hogan's finger starts waving in his opponent's face. You never hear what he's telling the guy, but you know it's something like he's made a big mistake and it's time to feel the power of the Python's brother. Punch, punch, punch. Off the ropes leg kick, bounce off the ropes, leg drop, and then 20 minutes of Hogan flexing to the crowd while the camera flashes lights on that stage in a seizure-inducing show that gave you enough time to break your brother's arm doing leg drops on the coffee table. True story. The whole thing is staged. You know this, and you don't care. For that 20 minutes, it was the immovable object and the unstoppable force. It's a suspension of disbelief, and it felt fucking awesome. And this is what good game is like when you're flirting with girls. She knows when you walked up to her, you didn't have to tell her that she looks just like a girl you used to date. She knows that you didn't have to get back to your friends, but you have to ask her this question quickly. She knows that you don't mean or believe half the stuff you're saying. She knows it in her heart of hearts. And you know what? She doesn't care, dude. For the next 20 minutes... All she hears is that guitar riff while you run up to her wearing a white spandex pair of underwear and full face paint. All she sees is that finger wagging in her face telling her in about a minute she's going to get a leg drop. It's a staged event portrayed as if it were true. It's kayfabe. And it's not just you. She's doing kayfabe as well. How many guys have been out there getting a drive back to your place with your date in the passenger seat or in the back of an Uber when you hear the, you know we're not gonna sleep together tonight, right? 
Now, I haven't been out of the game so long that I've forgotten that one. She knows she wants to smash. She knows you want to smash. And you're on your way in the car to go smash right now. But, kayfabe. Her theme music comes on. She's a good girl and has a good reputation. And she doesn't do this all the time. And you know that it's not going to happen. She's just coming over a coffee, right? When you hear authors like Rolo Tomasi talk about she just wants a guy that gets it. He's talking about a girl who wants to suspend disbelief. She wants kayfabe. She wants to relive that main event in WrestleMania 6 because it's the emotional distance she requires to have fun and escape her job and her boring ass boyfriend, if only for a few hours. So imagine sitting down to watch the main event in WrestleMania 6, and right as the warrior does this big splash, the Hulkster gets up and says, Ah, eh, that wasn't so bad. That didn't even hurt. How do you think you'd react to that? You'd probably scream and yell and get your money back. So when people say wrestling isn't real, what do they mean? It's violent. I mean, the guys really do get hurt. They're as physically imposing as they look. Hulk Hogan is six foot seven and 300 pounds for crying out loud. It's the misunderstanding of intention. Wrestlers want to entertain. They want to tell stories. They don't want to cripple each other over some weird beefs and a brass belt. Again, imagine sitting down to watch the main event of WrestleMania 6 and your buddy turns to you and asks what the State Athletic Commission thinks about letting Warrior fight when it's clearly Rick Rude has a higher card title for the show. I'm telling you right now, he's probably not going to be invited back for WrestleMania 7. Now, this is every guy who breaks the kayfabe. For every guy who doesn't get the subtext, Every guy who doesn't understand what she means when she says, you know we're not going to sleep together tonight, right? And responds with some borderline autistic female ally nonsense. Every guy who just doesn't get it gets shot down and the girl gets pissed. I've had guys do this and I've had them come and ask me, do you think they'll get another shot at it? No, man, you killed the magic. Learn from your mistake and move on. Now, maybe you're in your 30s or your 40s, you've settled down, have a girlfriend, maybe a wife at home, and you're thankful you don't have to stage any more plays or go to another WrestleMania. Well, you'd be wrong. Most guys who have done this notice that a lot of the same themes are coming out at their workplace. There's an author, Venkatesh Rao, he writes about it in a concept called the Gervais Principle, where organizations are pathological constructs. Social Darwinism that creates three organizational layers. Sociopaths, clueless, and economic losers. Now, the sociopaths are the pathological grease that keeps the thing running against all better intentions. The clueless are the ones who remain loyal to an organization that is blatantly uncaring. And the losers are those who are economically forced to make a bad bargain. Fully aware of its pathology, but unwilling or unable to do anything about it. They even have all their own sets of languages. Three sets of kayfabe scripts, depending on who's talking to whom. The clueless talk to each other by posturing. In sexual terms, this is guys bragging about sleeping with a thousand women on their PUA course, or how they only bang nines and tens bra. The economic losers use game talk. If power talk was a weapon, game talk would be the orange painted tip on the barrel, quoting Shakespeare, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The sociopaths talk in power talk. Everything they say has a purpose. I've said it before, understand womanese, speak in manglish. So when you were single, this was easy. Clueless guys sat there and bragged about their job and their six pack abs and their Lamborghini while the girl rolled her eyes or pretended to be interested so he could drive her friends to the bar and pick them up at 5 a.m. from that SoundCloud rapper's place. Losers sat there and gave all the justifications in the world. Well, women are hypergamous. She only liked him because he has a type 1 jawline or some other random incel cope. Sociopaths heard, well, you know we're not going to sleep together tonight, right? And then responded with, what kind of guy do you take me for? Um, not that easy. It's because they get it. It's because they speak deliberately. And more importantly, 
They keep their stupid mouths shut when it's not helpful. They don't argue with clueless losers over whether hypergamy is a thing. They aren't sitting there explaining every dribble, every free throw, every three-point shot, calling out every foul. They're too busy putting numbers up on the board to navel-gaze with this about other guys who clearly don't get it. Now maybe you're in your 40s and your job is pretty cushy. You're bored and you don't watch sports ball. Well, politics are another great example that I don't care about, but you probably do. Patriot Act, for example, was very Orwellian. MasterCard, for example, was granted the ability by law to cancel people for any reason under the guise of stopping terrorism. You take your shoes off at the airport because security was too inept to see a sketchy dude with a few sticking out of his shoe and C4 stamped on the bottom. Subjugation isn't patriotism. It's defined as devotion and vigorous support for one's country, which is a lovely container word, by the way. In this case, you grab a box, slap patriotism on the label, and inside, one's country is what they say it is, support is what they say it is, and vigorous means shut up and take off your shoes, sir. So what does this have to do with game? Well, it's the same thing. In politics, the transgender bathroom argument, or Fox News and CNBC telling you that you know we're not going to sleep with you tonight, right? And your 50 subscribed commentary channels arguing over the implications of some MTF MILF hanging out with chicks in the shitter. It's just one more set of guys that just don't get it. The clueless are clapping their hands and cheering on the MTF, cracking open a chick skull in UFC 420, or ignoring it while they argue about the merits of inclusion. The losers are arguing about bone density and testosterone levels. And meanwhile, the sociopaths understand the game. They don't put their daughters into wrestling class, and they sell a ton of rainbow flags. What kind of guy do you take me for? I'm not that easy. Again, politics is game, and game is kayfabe. It's applied to sex, it's applied to career, it's applied to politics. Now, why aren't we saying what we mean and meaning what we say? That's what most guys complain about. Well, easy enough. That's because 1% of the world's population are farmers. It's because the biggest threat to the military is suicide. And it's because we were able to turn off our country for a year and a half and nothing stopped working. We're safe. There are no threats. There are no famines. And we need something else to occupy our time. So. WrestleMania 2021 it is. Remember, kayfabe is everywhere. Back in like the pickup times, kayfabe is nagging. You're teasing a girl to symbolize you aren't intimidated by her knockers in your face or her Cardi B attitude. Kayfabe is subtext. You aren't phased by the weird nonsense she's talking about because you understand the game and her secret is safe with you. Kayfabe is plausible deniability. You know we're not going to sleep together tonight, right? Kayfabe are the anecdotes that you use as an icebreaker. I mean, did you really save those 101 Dalmatians from your evil stepmother? Probably not, but that's okay. I don't care. And kayfabe isn't just for women. It's for men. At least the most successful ones at the top. Remember, I only bang nines and tens, bro, is how the clueless talk. Remember. Women don't care about you unless you're six feet tall with a six-figure salary. That's how the economic losers talk. Getting past being red pill aware and being red pill in practice are how the power talks. Game is red pill, and we've known about it for a while. There's an author, Keone Galt, on an old post from 2009 showing how long it's been around. Now, quoting his revelation from 12 years ago right now on his phenomenal post, Game is Red Pill. And this is where game comes in. Game is Red Pill because it's based on men analyzing what behaviors are attractive to women and what behaviors are not. It is the basis for just about all social dynamics against any human interaction. Why men compete with other men for access to women. Why women compete for the attention and affection of men they perceive as desirable to other women. Game is red pill because it deals with understanding the principles of observable truths that are field tested. And these truths are in direct contradiction to the blue pill delusions of preconceived notions regarding gender roles in our brave new world order. 
And unlike the caricature portrayed by its detractors, game is not a simple ruse. It's not a routine or a shtick to manipulate or trick women into having sex with men. No, it's about truly understanding social dynamics and the role that a social hierarchy plays in any human interaction. And once you have this understanding, you begin to see the matrix or the false reality of delusions regarding gender relations. So to sum up, what's happening now isn't some feminine imperative oppressing a cadre of naive surface level men into subjugation. It's not feminism winning the gender war, although we can joke about it a bunch on Twitter if you want some followers. What it is, is it's a bunch of people who think wrestling is real, complaining that the world of today isn't reflective of the cigarette ads of yesterday. I just don't know how it's going to happen anymore. And I'm going to, I've seen the patterns and I've seen the fact that I don't see them having a lot of stability and maybe I've been psyops with all this stuff. Maybe they create an elaborate scheme to convince us. Um, I don't know, but I only know what my heart feels. And my heart feels like, my heart still feels like the best, you know, the best is yet to come.